about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited for Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this latest, our 10th live AQA A-Level Sociology Revision Blast. And once again, we're joined by uh, Craig in the middle and Duncan on the right. Of course, you knew that, for those of you who've joined our sessions before. Welcome if you're joining us live. We can see loads of people joining us in the live chat as we speak. And of course, if you're watching us on replay, another warm welcome to you. Uh, the way this works is that we have a series of activities that invite you to uh, uh, multiple choice type activities and other activities invite you if you're in the live chat to add your suggestions into the chat window. If you watch on replay, you get the chance to have a bit more time. You can pause the video and then start it again when you want to compare your responses with those explained by Craig and by Duncan. Uh, guys, we're dealing with media today. So what's uh, what's on the menu for media? That's right. So we're looking at the, the optional topic of media um, due to popular demand. <laughs> we had a request. So um, we've got that for you today. Um, so we're, we're looking at various aspects of the whole topic. We're looking across the whole topic. So we'll be looking at media ownership, um, the impact of the media on audiences, um, representations of different social groups in the media, all sorts coming up Fun. over the next half hour or so. Fantastic. Should we make a start? Yeah, let's get going. We're going to start go. with a code cracking activity, which I think is our first time of doing one of these in sociology. And it is a problem because until someone in the chat window gets the code right, we can't move on to any of the other <laughs> excellent activities. So you need to be paying close attention and trying to crack this code. So what we've got are some popular newspapers from the UK, and you've got to try and put them in the order of their circulation with the most popular first. Um, this is as of well, the, the the figures from February 2021, 
the uh, most recent figures we've got, data we've got. So can you put them in order? So the one that sells the most copies or, or distributes the most copies um, do. This is sociology, Sakib. It's, uh, it's the media topic within A-level sociology. Yeah. So it's all going to be sociological stuff. Okay. Um, okay. So anyone going to hazard a guess, put the letters in a particular order, see if anyone can get the right answer. As soon as someone gets the right answer, um, we can we can move on. <laughs> oh, Jack's gone for a particular selection, and it's not a yeah. bad one. It's pretty yeah. close. That's pretty close. Yeah. Um, one thing I would mention is think about how many people might read the Metro. It's a funny one that isn't it, Duncan? So like circulation and and, and mm. the actual number that are number that are actually um, purchased are two yeah. totally different things because the metro obviously is a free. It's free, yeah, and, yeah, and it's pretty much everywhere. Yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily put the metro last. Um, ordinarily, I'll give you a clue. In normal times, the metro would actually be first. So in normal times, the metro is the most read, or possibly most read, most looked at, most sat on um, <laughs> newspaper in the UK. But February 2021 wasn't normal time, so there weren't as many people on trains and buses and things as normal. But I still wouldn't put it as your last one. Any other guesses? I have to say some of your other options look pretty close to the right order. Mm -hmm. um, maybe... Consider whether the Express might be slightly more popular than you think. <laughs> it might be. What do we reckon? Any other guesses? Oh, Kate's gone for the correct answer, I do believe. Very well done. Yeah, so the Daily Mail is, um, out of those options, the most popular. Um, and I think actually just generally is the most popular uh, UK newspaper. Then the Metro, as I say, in normal times, um, the Metro is even well, has even more copies circulating. Um, then the Mirror, then the Express, then the Guardian, then the Financial Times as the the least popular, if you like. Of course, this is in terms of physical copies, and perhaps a lot of people might um, access articles from, say, for example, the Guardian or the Financial Times online. Um, so it's not always as straightforward as just saying that's that's where most people get their news from. And of course, today, lots of people get their news from the television and the radio and things and the internet as well okay we're gonna move on to craig for a big reveal activity okay thank you duncan i know the uh the, the daily mail app is quite well read as well isn't it it is yeah, mail online. Daily mail yeah. App is one of the biggest ones um not that i use it at all um <laughs> never um but never mind um so we're going to move on to our next activity which is a big reveal um if you've joined us before you'll know what the big reveal is what we do is we slowly reveal clues um towards a topic or a theme area um and there are five clues in total and you need to guess what the topic area is um, in as few clues as possible. If you put your your, um, your responses in the right hand chat box, or sort of like if you're playing along um, on the catch up, um, try and guess in as few as possible. These are usually good good ones for essay titles and things like that. So let's look at our first uh, let's look at our first clue. Our first clue is the selective filter. So what topic in media might the selective filter come under? could come under a couple of topics mm -hmm. can we have our second reveal the two-step flow might give you a hint oh, oh, Emma's just seen, something. seen a correct yeah seen a good answer there let's reveal a third one cultural effects yeah there's a couple of people getting it now I wonder if anyone can guess what our fourth one would be then. <laughs> that that would be a good one. one. That changed, that's changed the game, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The fourth one, uses and gratifications. And finally, 
we have the hypodermic syringe and yes there was quite a few correct answers sort of like came through there very early on um if we could just reveal the answer please jim that's right it is the models of media effects on audience i think somebody else sort of like said the relationship between the media their content presentation of audiences as well and um, that is correct that's a good um good responses there let's move on to our second big reveal please so philo and miller part of the glasgow university media group of course, this could be very broad um, on Glasgow University Media Group. We're involved in lots of different areas. Um, but what could their research into, into what topic, specific topic area? Bit of a tough one first up, isn't it? Let's look at our second one, please. The work of Stuart Hall. I thought it was me. What could you be looking at? <laughs> oh, yeah, it could, could be you, Duncan. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know. One set up the um, Centre for Afro-Caribbean Studies and, um, you know, you, you'd study sociology and skipped and, you know, there's <laughs> not much difference. Um, OK, uh, number three, Cohen and Young should start to be looking at sort of like what topic area this is now. It's a little bit more of a hint with Cohen and Young and their work together. Of course, this comes across in um, crime as well, this part. It does, yeah. Mm. Our second topic. Uh, our second, sorry, I was just going to say, did you see Stuart Hall was on the? Uh, well, he wasn't obviously because he's, he's the RIP, but um, it was on the Great British Menu as one uh, inspiring a dish on the Great British Menu. I believe so. I think I read it incorrectly yeah. and thought he was on Great British Bake Off. And All so right, no, it was the Great British Menu. Was a cake, but um, yeah, uh, McRobbie and Thornton is another one we can look at. These all link into a specific area. Um, of media study and I think this final one should give it away Galtung and Rune what do you particularly know them Galtung for? and Rune what do they particularly know for? okay let's reveal the answer on this one it is presentation of the news and of course there's a lot of crossover there between crime and media uh the crime and media units as well which is, is always a nice combination if you're doing um, the core module of crime and you're doing the optional model module of media there is a lot of nice crossover between those two sections there um and on the last one popular protest and our second one the impact on local or folk cultures. Which topic area could we be looking at here if we discuss these ideas? And number three, participation culture. Anyone I got an idea of the topic area that we could be talking about within the media unit here? There's a couple of other comments. Oh, Kate, Kate's, yeah, Kate's mm -hmm. suggested, suggested one. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. I was thinking so far it could also be new media, couldn't it? I don't think it's going to be, but it could have been. Oh, okay. Cultural homogeneity. Kate's is looking good, isn't it? Mm hmm. And number five, media saturation. And if we re re reveal a response, it was got pretty. He's very good. I've got after uh, three clues there by Kate. Uh, well done, Kate. The impact of globalization on popular culture. Um, so these are all aspects. These are all uh, um, impacts of sort of like how globalization um, has changed popular culture. Now we'll go over to Duncan for an on balance activity. OK, so the idea here is to have a bit of a debate on the chat window or at home. Um, we going to look at some arguments in favour and some arguments against a particular suggestion. So first of all, I want you to suggest two arguments to support the idea that the media is owned and controlled by a wealthy few. And we might want to separate that owned and controlled because they it might be one and not the other. But first of all, we think of some arguments in favour of the idea that the media is owned and controlled by a wealthy few, by, a, by the elite, if you like, or the ruling class. Um, it might be evidence, it might be an argument or a study. What do we think? Just put some suggestions in the chat window that support that argument. That the media is owned and controlled by a wealthy few. What do we think? Uh, 
Any thoughts? Is it? What do you think? I guess the media is a nice broad term, isn't it? 80% of the UK media is owned by five billionaires from a Marxist viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a popular statistic that goes around, isn't there? That there's a you know, very high percentage is owned by, mm -hmm. you know, whether it possibly, I mean, that is, the, that is the stat you see, five billionaires. I mean, that sort of individualizes, and obviously a lot of the time it's, it's big corporations, but there normally is a, a billionaire or a, a very wealthy person sitting close to the yeah. top of those big corporations. Um, can so we name the, anyone? I was, I was, I was going to, I was just going to start naming some of them then. <laughs> uh, state capture. Mm, all right. Mm. Mm. Any Guardian columnist Owen Jones said that the media is a privileged closed shop around 51% of top journalists are privately educated. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point as mm -hmm. well. And well, well supported. Um, yeah, the traditional print media dominated by a few moguls. Can we name a media mogul before we look at some arguments in favour? You've got the ones I came up with and some extra Probably arguments as well. One shares name with um, a sociologist in the family unit. <laughs> yeah, for well, surname anyway. Yeah. Surname, yeah. Yeah. They're not related as far as I know. I'm, I'm not aware of any relation either, no. Um, shall we have a look at the arguments in favour that I put there? So. I'll come to Stella, um, Stella Charlotte's point in a moment about pluralism, because that's that's an interesting one. Um, so a small number of media moguls own most of the print media, um, e.g. Murdoch, and Jack's put Murdoch mm -hmm. in the chat window. Editors and senior journalists are also dominated by wealthy white men, and that supports um, Emma's point Emma. about the uh, Owen Jones um, point about the uh, privately educated top journalists um, now Stella's mentioned that the media reflects the values and beliefs that are present within society so really it's controlled by the public and public view so that might start us off on the next bit which is arguments against the idea that the media is owned and controlled by a wealthy few so can we think of some more arguments on that side we've had one that you know in a pluralist society it's the uh, the public who control it but can we think of any other arguments against the idea that the media is owned and controlled by a wealthy few. It's interesting to mention Owen Jones because he's just started up his own media channel, hasn't he? He has. Is he part of the wealthy few? Mm, well, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's crowdfunded, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, apparently so. Mm. No, so. I, I, knew, a I knew Owen when he was a, a student. He wasn't, he wasn't really part of the wealthy few at that time. Oh. Um, it might be now. <laughs> um, freedom of the press to publish. Okay. Yeah, so the press, there should be freedom of the press. They're not, hopefully not dominated by the government or forced to stop from doing what they want to do. They can challenge the wealthy and the few, can't they, in the media? And sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. Consumers are also producers of media. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I suppose what Craig was saying about um, Owen Jones of the crowdfunding is sort of relevant to that. But obviously, on any of us could blog and yeah. tweet and they, be part of the yeah. media can't we? when you when you look at the, at the 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 growth of social media you look at the growth of particularly things like tiktok and sort of like twitter and and um instagram and stuff like that yes we, we we are now not only consumers of media but also presenters of media and i think emma's just pointed out there citizen journalism um is something that's um that certainly has grown in the last few years although you know, if we look at the research that they did, they, there's still argument. I think it was Yvonne Dukes suggested that sort of like citizen journalism still doesn't quite have the impact of mainstream media at uh, present. No. Mainstream media is slightly more, yeah. uh, well, is more um, influential, more powerful. Yeah. And I guess most of the time, if we see citizen journalism, it's it's filtered through the mainstream media, isn't it? We, we see what what then gets on to be reported on the BBC or in the newspapers or whatever, unless you happen to follow that person on Twitter or their friend on mm -hmm. Facebook, you don't see it um, unfiltered. Well, um, there's loads of really good yeah. points coming in here. Then, kind, of, them? kind of fits into, kind of, that kind of fits into the idea of news values where sort of like things are selected for their newsworthiness, mm -hmm. isn't it really? Yeah. And so less concentration of media. Things can go viral, obviously. Less concentration of the media, power's not in the hands of the minority elites. Audience controls it. Loads of really good points. Um, 
social media. Okay, so just a few ideas that there, there were loads of ones. Oh, and th fake news. That's a, that's a, yeah, we could talk about fake news as well, absolutely. Um, owners, this is kind of seen as a sort of counter argument to the idea that the media moguls control the media. The owners of the newspapers, it's suggested, don't really have the time or the inclination to control the content. They just want to sell papers. They just want to put out what, what will sell the most papers and make the most profit. There's a counter argument to that, that certainly Rupert Murdoch did put quite a lot of, and I assume still does, put quite a lot of pressure on editors over the content. Mm. Um, and we can think of certain stories where that was true, for example, um, the line on the Iraq war, all the papers had to have the same line on that, for example. Um, and so often people sort of counter with that, that um, it's the editors and journalists who control the content. And then obviously we've got the counter argument to that back on our first slate that they're, you know, the Owen Jones point that they tend to be wealthy anyway. Um, but then there's this pluralism point that's been made in various ways really well in the chat window. That in some ways it's the audiences who control the media, especially the new media, which there's so much diversity, there's so much choice that you can essentially pick um, what you want to listen to. That bring, brings its own problems, of course, with this sort of idea of an echo chamber. Um, like there'll be lots of people on Twitter who think the Northern Independence Party are going to win the Hartlepool by-election because there's so many people tweeting about it in who they happen to follow on Twitter. But um, I suspect, you know, they may be, they may not get quite as big a vote as their, you know, the Twitter echo chamber might suggest. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so well done, some excellent contributions there. Mm -hmm. Shall we uh, move on to the next bit? We've got a five, four, three, two, one with Craig. Thanks, Duncan. Yeah, um, lots of good points that like were made there. Just the one point on pluralism. Mm -hmm. If you look at the um, the English and the Scottish versions of newspapers as well, yes. you can see how they reflect the differences in the audience, particularly on things like Scottish Independence yeah. um, or, or things like Brexit as well. That's a really useful yeah. way of looking. The, Scot the Scottish the Sun on a Scottish Sun. Yeah, I was going to say the Scottish Sun on Election Day is always worth a look because they yeah. support different papers. Yeah, different yeah. Countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so on our five, four, three, two, one, what we do is we ask you to name um, five of something, four of something, the three of something, two of something, one of something. So on this one, we're going to look at um, what I want you to do is identify five different types of media. Now, this can be new media or it can be the traditional media. Uh, four characteristics of new media, four differences that, uh, four, four characteristics that make new media different from traditional media. Three divisions in the use of media. So this will be something divide. Uh, two approaches to new media, two ways in which society views pu uh, new media, um, and one benefit that is described from new media. So this is the very first kind of topic that we study in media is looking at the role of new media, or some people would study first of all. So you have two minutes to identify those. If you put the, the, the um, answers in the right hand column, um, or if you're playing along at home, just kind of jot, sorry, if you're playing along on the EM to catch up, just jot those down, the five, four, three, two, one. So we have two minutes starting now. Five, four, three, two, one. So five types of media, clue, so you're probably watching on one. Uh, four <laughs> characteristics of media. Well, one of the things with the chat box might be um, something that you can, you can think about for a characteristic of new media. Divisions in use of media. Well, who uses it? Who's less likely to use it? And how might they be divided? Okay, so we've got a few here. Social media, film, TV shows, newspapers, books. Pretty good there. They are all five types of media. characteristics of new media. Ready as magazines, TV, social media, yeah. Hi, right. good response there for characteristics of new media, I think. Definitely a few people. Oh, there, yeah, definitely. Jack. That might make you think of something for three as well, Jack. Think about exactly, yeah. Young people being online more like that. It's an idea of some divisions in India. Mm -hmm. We think of 
many approaches to new media. Who might like it? Who might dislike it? There's a few more coming Five, through the characteristics of new four, media there. Three, two, so lots of one. good terms coming through. Mm. Oh, well done, Emma. Yeah. Oh, well done, Emma. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these then. The five uh, types of media, we got those pretty quickly. Um, I think I put podcasts in rather than radio, slightly different. But yes, you could have radio mm -hmm. in there, applications, um, um, websites, books, uh, newspapers, television, film, um, lots of different forms of media. And one of the things you have to be able to do sort of like, um, when you do study the media is separate those into new media and, and, and um, sort of like tr more traditional media. Uh, so let's look at our uh, characteristics of what new media is. Uh, there's a few that I've put. Uh, there's four that I've put down there. There was a few others that we uh, that we saw in in mm. the chat box there. So digitalization, technical technological convergence, interactivity, and a greater choice. And um, we've also had accessibility in there, increased um, audience power as well. I can see in there and the virtual post uh, the virtuality, the virtual nature of it. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say postmodernists will be having a field day about us discussing these issues in this on this forum in this way on you know it's like kind of intertextuality and self-reflexiveness gone mad really that we're discussing new media yep. convergence yeah, and interactivity interact and absolutely interacting with interacting with people uh, you know sort of like um from from a, a distance away so like about these concepts um let's look at um through our three um divides uh the generational divide um i think jack mentioned it briefly targeting young people online more there is a generational divide but be uh, between sort of like who accesses um social media and sort of like how it's accessed and what it's used for uh, there are generational divides there is a social class divide and again sort of like how it is used in different ways it's not just the, the the number of people who are accessing it but it is how they access it and what they access it for and gender divide as well so for example it, it's estimated that males will spend longer on the internet but females are more likely to interact with social media so there's lots of different divisions within how we use the media and there's also the global divide as well when you look at um the emerging markets uh, globally uh, in terms of sort of like um, in terms of the usage of new media and it's estimated around about 50 percent of the planet still on um, connected to the internet and uh, particularly places like china where sort of like you have like about 50 percent of the of the coverage of internet access on a regular basis and yet they still have four you know they have still have two billion users um so uh, let's go on to number two and that was spot on. I think Emma got that one. Our two approaches, ne neophiliacs, those who, uh, who embrace the idea of the new media, are very positive about it, and they think that it has many benefits. And our cultural pessimists, who, who are very closely linked to the kind of Marxist approaches, um, who thinks that it creates this form of cultural homogeneity. And one benefit, well, e-commerce is what I thought, um, is one of the ones I put in. But of course, there are many other benefits of the new media. Um, that we've um, discussed already. Uh, so well, let's move on to Duncan with our next activity, which is our altered vowels. Okay, this one's a bit of fun, really. Some key terms from the media topic are going to come up on the screen, but we swapped the vowels. The vowels have been changed for different vowels. Um, you've got to try and work out what it is. And also, if in the chat window or at home, if you want, in, on the catch-up, you can tell us quickly what the word means as well as working out what, what it is. So we've got hug your mu neck, Muscalinity. Something like that. Any ideas? I do have to read them out. It's in the contract. Mm. Oh, well, Jack's got them there straight away. Hegemonic or hegemonic masculinity. Um, if And Emma's got it as well. If anyone wants to give us a quick definition in the, uh, in the chat window, that'd be brilliant. So well done. Lots of people coming in with it now. Um, Ahmed, Kate, brilliant. Well done. Um, I'll, we'll keep going through. Sorry, each Craig, week yeah. you do this, Duncan. Each week you do this, Duncan. So, like your accent kind of changes based on. I mean, last week it was very kind of Eastern European um, <laughs> words, and it sounds a bit Germ Germanic. Um, it sounds a bit German. I think it, sort of like I think it does depend it. on the. Yeah, it depends on the word. It sort of lends word. itself to a particular pronunciation style. Yeah, well done, Jack. Dominant type of masculinity, the dominant idea of the characteristics associated with masculinity. Well done, Emma. Yeah, okay. Symbolic enhelatine. Enhelatine. Symbolic enhelatine. Oh, Emma was quick with that one. 
Yeah, well done. And Kate, symbolic annihilation. Does anyone want to give us a quick definition of symbolic annihilation in the chat window? And where it might present itself in the media topic. How it might be relevant. Good term. Sounds quite dramatic, doesn't it? Symbolic annihilation. What does it mean? Probably not an easy one to chat out to type out really quickly. <laughs> Try and come up with a, as quick a definition as possible for symbolic annihilation. Who might be symbolically annihilated in the media? Okay, a couple of thoughts going through, but so yeah, it's the idea that um, we'll talk about the way different groups social, socially are represented in the media. Um, coming up in, in in other activities, but as Jack says, there um, there are some groups that just aren't represented at all. They're just left out. Um, they're symbolically annihilated. Essentially, then it's as if they don't exist um, in terms of media representation. And it's I think it was first, as far as I remember, first coined in relation to representations of women in some um, aspects of media. But it's been applied to other mm -hmm. other groups as well. Okay, if we look at the next one, Othni Suntrock. Othnis on Trock. I think I've probably helped that one by the way I've pronounced it, that it's probably going to get there quicker. Yeah, well done, Emma. Um, ethnocentric. Okay, we talk about that in lots of sociology topics, not just in the media. So we talk about the ethnocentric curriculum or whether sociology might itself be ethnocentric, but also, of course, about whether the media is ethnocentric. <coughs> Sorry, do beg your pardon. Uh, quick cough. Um, okay, so if anyone wants to do a quick definition of Canva, I think we know what it means. Falk, Falk Dovols. Falk Dovols. I think he was a Hollywood actor. I don't think he was. Really. Again, if you say we, that, we, my, my first thought was of uh, Peter Falk, who was yeah, uh, me, me too. It was Columbo, right. yeah. That, that was where that was my first thought as well. I think that's why I said it. Uh, well, lots of people coming in with folk devils. Well done. Um, who wrote about folk devils? What does it mean? Who are the folk devils? We know this from crime as well as from media, of course. Um, so if anyone wants just to type quickly, who wrote about folk devils and moral panics in the chat window, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, well done, Jack. It was Cohen, Stan Cohen. Um, it's kind of the popular villains, if you like, villains who've been sort of created by the media or by, by society. Um, who you can blame things. Um, and I think this is the last one. Unstatunol Rockusm. That one's almost impossible to pronounce. Unstatunol Rockusm. Rockusm? Very relevant today. Yeah, well done, Kate. It is institutional racism. There's a report out today. Um, so keep an eye on the news, see what Tony Sewell's been saying uh, in the report that's released today. Okay, well done, institutional racism. I'll hand back to Craig for a connection wall. Thank you, Duncan. Um, on this connection wall, there are 16 um, descriptions or 16 ways in which different social class groups are viewed in the media. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort these out into four groups of phrases. So first of all, we need to identify four different social classes that might be uh, that are represented within the media. So four different social classes that are represented in the media. And then we'll work out four ways in which um, they are represented. So what four social classes are usually represented in the media? That'll be our first stage. What four social classes? We tend to focus a lot in sociology, really, about the working class and the middle class, don't we? But, you know, there's obviously uh, Emma's put underclass, lower class, middle class, upper class. Perfect. And we will start with the upper class. Um, we'll look at sort of like, so what I would like you to do is identify four of those characteristics that are on the screen that we would associate with representations of the upper class in the media. So how are the upper class uh, represented? I'll give you a so clue. By, it's not so by that we mean like kind of aristocrats, don't we? And the very, yeah, very take, rich. Take, 
Yeah, Jacob Rees Mogg. And that's <laughs> I, I, I will give you a clear. It's 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 te- yeah, oh, oh, two, two, you've already got in there. I was gonna say it's not scroungers. Um no. Um it depends which bit of the media there, doesn't it? Because if you if you go onto Class Wars website, <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, they, course, they, yeah, they definitely right. say the royal family are scroungers. I've I've read that that, that yeah, page at some yeah, point just for research. Um, um, okay. Hmm. So um, how do, how would, let's let's put this better. How would the mainstream media <laughs> um, represent the upper class? Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean sort of like you know like. Um, um, Dave's socialist worker website. <laughs> uh, media, media. Yeah. How would the BBC? What kind of characteristics might the BBC sort of like suggest of the upper class? Okay, so Jack's gone with deserving, respectability, important, motivational. Okay, some good ones there. Important for the economy, talented. Okay, let's see. Remember the some of these. That I picked out. Yeah, I was going to say some of these we'll might be more the middle class, the class might they? Mm. There's some good ones that are coming through here. Yeah, they are seen as talented. Uh, they're seen as motivational. These are the people we should look up to. These are the people we should aspire to, particularly when you're talking about um, wealthy business leaders. Um, you know, often there's sort of like the idea of wealth creators, and therefore we should be aspiring to these people. Uh, talented, deserving of their position, and very important for the economy. And this is why a lot of um, our news media focuses on things like um, stocks and shares, because obviously this is important for the upper class, um, whereas it's less important for other social class groups. OK, um, um, so let's focus next on the, um, the middle class. How might the middle class be represented in mainstream media? Middle class, They're usually sort of like seen as default, really, aren't they? The middle class. Mm-hmm. Um, by the media, but um, the, the, there tends to be um, when we look at sort of like our, our, our representations of, of um, the middle class, uh, they do tend to focus on certain things. Okay, so respectability experts anxious about moral decline and a target uh, a target audience for consumption is perfect. Well done. Uh, well done, Emma. Spotted that straight away. Respectable consumers anxious about moral decline. Yep some good responses there and they are the four responses that we had well done emma so the experts respectability the target order from order from consumption our next class uh, that we're going to look at is the working class how might the mainstream media portray the working class which of those eight remaining characteristics do we think might be linked closely to the working class and the way they are represented by the media It's difficult this because you remember we've got to sort of kind of you may want to possibly think uh, in the opposite way and sort of think well which of these would be more likely to represent the underclass and then identify those that are, uh, those that are working class really yeah i was going to say because that's there was a reference earlier to owen jones wasn't there and so I'm, I'm assuming some people will have read his um chavs book yeah the demonization of the working class is the type the subtitle of the book um but obviously some of the references relate to what we might term the underclass as well probably when you're studying mm. the media when, when you're studying the media topic it's sort of like you do kind of split it into those four different kind mm. of sections the upper class and the, and the monarchy a representation of the middle class working class and then underclass and poverty so which of those on there might we associate with working class particularly working class um when we see them on on kind of mainstream media because um again you've got it's that separation of working class and underclass i think so maybe think about how what you know if you look at a sort of political angle to it what people think will appeal to or suggest will appeal to red wall voters what sort of ideas might appeal to them and then also how people are presented in soap operas and things like that it tends to be working class people in kind of coronation street and stuff like that doesn't it? okay so we've got some good ones there anti-social um that tends to be more associated with the underclass trivial uneducated um the trivial nature yeah the trivial nature sort of like of, of particularly of the topics that interest the working class are always presented as being kind of very much um, a mass audience um and also sort of like we would see there in there as well emma's just put in there xenophobic 
uh, kind of fear of outsiders, um, particularly fear sort of like of, of anybody um, sort of like who isn't flag waving Union Jack kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So uneducated, promiscuous, xenophobic, trivial nature. Of course, this is the way the media represent working class. This is not exactly how working class people behave. <laughs> uh, and our final four, obviously, is the underclass, often presented as scroungers, um, idleness, antisocial behaviour, and criminality. Okay, um, so that are the different representations um, of the different social classes, which um, obviously links into a potential question you could get, which is looks at sort of like the representations of social class um, by the mainstream media. And we shall hand back over to Jim in the studio. Yeah, brilliant. Fantastic session. It's interesting how much crossover there is, isn't it, with the media topic linking back as you did there earlier to, for example, crime and deviance. Mm, I think the media topic, the media topic is 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 certainly one of those really good topics for lots of contemporary stuff. It links really well with yeah. things like culture and identity. Um, there's it's a, it's a really nice topic for students to study. I think the media. Yeah, and growing popularity as well. Um, you mm -hmm. know, a few years ago, everyone did beliefs, but it's it's uh, media's growing. Now? Something like it's that. Thirty yeah. percent. One in mm. three. Yeah. Yes, so really hope that's topic. been really useful. Some really good answers. Yeah, fantastic. Lots and lots of people on the live chat, and I'm sure many more hundreds, well, on the average so far, several thousand people will have viewed this in the next week or two, uh, particularly as they start to uh, to get prepared for any assessments coming up after ESA. So yeah. hopefully you found it useful. If you did, if you're watching live, and also if you watch your on replay, uh, if you found it useful, Please give the uh, the YouTube the as Duncan is showing there beautifully the thumbs up sign. Two reasons: one, it makes Craig and Duncan particularly happy, but also it makes it easier for YouTube to recommend this session, this uh, this live stream to other AQA A level sociology students who might be browsing YouTube and may find it useful. So hopefully they will. If you want to catch up on this uh, or to download the powerpoints. Or the PowerPoint for this and all the previous sessions, best place to go is tutor2.net forward slash live. And if you go to the replay section there, very easy to find, uh, you'll be able to go back to this, the 10th, and all the previous nine AQA A-level revision blast sessions. Lots of other subjects covered as well there, geography A-level, psychology, economics, business, politics, loads of other subjects if some of those are uh, subjects that you're studying in addition to sociology. Uh, Duncan, Craig, what do we think? What do we think on the next few sessions? We've got to line up our next few sessions for the next few yeah. weeks uh, this week. Uh, what do we think in terms of topics? Uh, well, we have we have talked about doing a global development one because there was a bit of um, there was a bit of demand for that. Although it is one of the more minority interest <laughs> topics, um, I think we will revisit. We've we've already revisited education and crime. I think we'll revisit theory and methods again and and uh, look at some other aspects of that um and i think we'll probably have a look back at families again at some point as well do you think craig i think so i think we we, we could do something like maybe a year 12 year 12 mix or a year 13 yeah. mix as well brilliant so, um, yeah bit of a really good. Nice. to answer mm. jack's question gcse blast is a topic mix on monday yeah a bit yeah. of everything if yeah, we're back on Monday for GCSE. We'll get that session that lined up on YouTube. If you subscribe to the channel, that's the best way to get an alert. As soon as all the new sessions are added, then you can decide whether you can uh, whether you want to attend live or catch up on the on the replay. Don't forget, YouTube always live streams, always uh, provides a replay of every live stream. So always an opportunity to go back. And what we'll do is we'll go back through this and all the previous sessions and what's known as timestamp them or add chapters if you want to go to particular activities or particular topics within each uh, session. Fantastic stuff. Many thanks once again to Craig and Duncan for putting together this really superb media-focused revision session. We look forward to catching you live or on replay at a future AQA A-Level Sociology Revision Blast. But for now, from the three of us, it's uh, thank you very much and see you later. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.